This meeting will now come to order. At this time, we will have the proposed FY 2016-2017 Richmond Biennial Government Budget presented by the Honorable Mayor Dwight C. Jones. President Mosby and Vice President Hilbert, members of City Council and other elected officials that are here, city employees, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Our city has changed significantly since I presented the budget a year ago. Since that time, we've opened the new Huguenot High School, Richmond's first new high school in 40 years. Construction has begun on the country's coolest craft brewery which will bring people and jobs to Fulton. And today, we finally build bus rapid transit, not just dreaming and hoping for an expanded public transportation system, but actually beginning that process. Over the past year, we have also seen significant leadership changes within city government. Last year, when it became clear that a wholesale turnaround was necessary, and job one was to place experienced people in top leadership roles. Uh, and that's what we have done. And today, I'd like to present some of the folks who are here, uh, an experienced professional team that we hope will turn around the city's finance. I'd like to introduce them to you. Since December, we now have a permanent finance director in Paul Jez. Is Paul, Paul stand up? He joined the city after 20 years at VCU where he served as treasurer and associate vice president for business services. Thank you, Paul. We also have Leon Glaster, who joined the city as controller. He has a longstanding experience uh, in working with financial turnarounds, and he had significant roles in uh, Detroit and Oakland, and we know that he'll do the same thing for us. Thank you, Leon. Also, Sharon McDonald who joined the city to leave, uh, she joined the city to lead the revenue uh, administration after 16 years as the elected commissioner of revenue in Norfolk. She is here to work with us now. And this new team makes our IT director, Doug McCullough, look like an old veteran because he's been here just over a year. And we can all have confidence that his ability to turn around the transition problems that come along with the rollout of RAPIDS will be taken care of. Thank you so much, Doug. And on the budget side, we now have a permanent budget director, Dr. Jay Brown, who has led the team effectively in preparing this year's budget. He's done a fine job. Thank you for your work, Jay. And under the leadership of Deputy CAO Norman Butts, who's an accountant, an attorney, and a former auditor himself, uh, he's leading this team that's going to turn our finances around into the city of Richmond. Thank you so much, Norm. They're working tirelessly to rebuild a finance system that previously was marked by high-level vacancies, turnover, and inadequate training. And I have every confidence in their skills and professional credentials, and I ask you to support them as they work to make sure Richmond gets the basics right. Thanks to a new cooperative spirit in our finance department, I'm pleased to pre present the biennial plan for FY 2016 and 17 as well as our capital improvement plan for 2020. Here are the highlights. This budget includes a pay raise for city employees, police officers, and firefighters. It provides new body cameras for Richmond police officers. My budget makes record new investments in Richmond public schools to meet their maintenance needs and improve their academics. We're proposing permanent cuts to city agencies to make these investments possible. And we're launching a new Richmond Promise scholarship for high school students to provide more opportunities for graduating seniors and as, as an extra tool to help mitigate poverty. This budget also maintains our commitment to developing the riverfront, transforming the East End, investing in public infrastructure, and maintaining fiscal discipline. Additionally, this budget meets our obligation to implement multimodal public transportation with bus rapid transit. This budget was developed to reflect the core principles that have guided my administration, including public safety officers <clears throat> being rewarded, mitigating our 26% poverty rate, investing in our public schools, and creating jobs and new economic development opportunities, and delivering the public services 
that Richmonders expect and deserve. To accomplish these goals, we have prepared a balanced budget with all expenditures in line with current revenue projections. The budget provides full funding for legal requirements and mandates as well as strategic priorities. The following are major expenditures and policy highlights in the proposed biennial physical plan for FY 2016 and FY 2017 as well as the capital improvement plan for FY 2016 to FY 2020. Total general revenues are projected at $689.2 million for 16 and $700.1 million for 17. This is a projected decrease of $2,704,000 uh, uh, or four-tenths of a percent below the FY 2015 budget of $691 million. The proposed biennial fiscal plan for FY 16 and 17 does not include the use of the city's assigned fund balance. The total capital improvement plan expenditures and revenues are projected at $80.7 million in 16 and $41.6 million in 17. The first year is much larger in par part because we are proposing to significantly front load infrastructure investments for Richmond Public Schools so that they can address their facility needs faster. This fiscally prudent budget protects our citizens from major increases in the cost of services. It funds programs to provide our people in our city who are vulnerable with the services they need. It invests in our neighborhoods, rewards our workforce, and reduces spending in other parts of the government so that we can invest more in our schools. This fiscal plan reflects conservative financial principles, turning away from what has happened in the past. Several items last year that constitute ongoing expenses were funded with, funded with one-time sources, and I want you to know that my budget today does not recommend continuing funding in those instances. Also in this biennial fiscal plan, for FY 2014 and 15, we noted that some fiscal issues remain to be addressed over the next several years. Even though the city is doing well and has improved its bond rating over six times since I was mayor, since I became mayor, these issues include the need to increase pension liabilities, increase the unassigned fund balance, and to provide more cash funding toward our capital budget. Now let me turn specifically to some priorities starting with the safety of our community. Throughout my administration and in this budget, public safety remains a priority. It's time to show our police officers and firefighters that we value their work. Last year, only school employees got a pay raise in Richmond. No one else got a permanent raise. This year, we're providing money to raise the salary of police and fire. In the operating budget, $2.1 million in FY16 and $5.2 million in FY17 is provided to raise the salaries of recruits from $36,500 to $41,000 for firefighters and police officers graduating from the academy. This will also increase their salaries from $38,500 to $41,500 in FY16 and then up to $42,000 in FY17. Our plan also addresses compression issues within police and fire and it provides career development advancement for FY16 and a step increase in FY17. Taken together, this compensation package will uh, make our force more competitive, particularly with our neighboring localities. In FY16, we're proposing $401,000 for body cameras and cloud-based storage. In FY17, we're proposing another $560,000 $1,000 for, for more body cameras, as well as $227,000 for new police body armor. I'm proposing $354,000 in 16 and $215,000 in 17 to lease a new site for the police's, police department's property and evidence section, and moving it out of the aged public safety building across the street. On the capital side, $46 million in city funds and $4.9 million in public funds are recommended to fund major upgrades to the 800 megahertz radio communication system that will make it possible for first responders across the region to communicate in times of emergency. For the fire department, we are 
proposing $500,000 in capital funds in 16 and $2.3 million over five years to continue the renovation of our fire stations, as well as $280,000 in operating funds in both years for self-contained breathing apparatus upgrades. These investments will help our police and firefighters protect our communities, and I ask you to approve them quickly. Turning to our economy, we have to acknowledge that poverty continues to hold back disproportionately high numbers of the citizens of our city. And let's be honest about this. We know the reason. In the old Richmond, decisions were made to build massive housing projects, thereby concentrating thousands of poor people in places that trapped them there for generations. This is clearly a moral issue, but it's also a financial issue. Wall Street always asks the same question whenever we meet with them. What are you going to do about concentrated poverty in Richmond? My administration has made it a top priority to find ways for all Richmonders to join in our city's resurgence, no matter what side of town they live in. The Maggie L. Walker Initiative for Expanding Opportunity and Fighting Poverty has been hard at work implementing targeted anti-poverty strategies. Highlighting in this budget includes $2.7 million to continue ongoing programs that you approved in 15. Uh, this includes continuing the city's contribution of $975,000 to the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund and $350,000 for Middle School Renaissance, 436 uh, 436 for the Center for Workforce Innovation. This budget also includes roughly $425,000 to help reduce water and wastewater costs for qualified low-income residents. When people experience crisis, the Metro Care program will help. It will help by providing loans to repair plumbing or replace existing products with EPA water sense labeled products. This is good for families and it's also great uh, a great way to conserve water and reduce waste. Now, I strongly believe that a good education is the best way to help people rise out of poverty. That's why funding for Richmond Public Schools is the single largest expenditure in this budget being presented today. RPS spends more than a quarter of a billion dollars a year they receive vastly more local taxpayer dollars than any other department in the city. In fact, what I am proposing in operating funding for schools represents 23.4% of the entire city budget for FY16. Here's some key specifics. In FY16, we're proposing $13.1 million in maintenance funding. This is a 162% increase, and it's part of a $22.8 million five-year package. To go even further, we're working with the school system to implement performance contracting. This is an energy efficiency plan that is designed to generate operational savings that can be turned back for even more school maintenance needs. This approach gives the school system the capability to increase their total resources by as much as another $20 million. On the operating side, we're proposing $136.9 million in local funding to RPS to meet existing operating budget revenue needs. This is a $2.1 million increase to RPS over the current year budget. It will expand the budget base and it will continue into the future. We've also included $425,000 to launch a network of future centers to prepare for the launch of Richmond Promise Scholarships Program to benefit graduates of Richmond Public Schools. These future centers will serve as dedicated space within the high schools to assist students and families secure the financial means for post-secondary educational training opportunities. This is a key component of the city's efforts to address poverty. Capital funding, remain, funding remains in place for the new Dove Elementary School and the amount of $18.3 million. In addition to these extensive investments, we continue to invest heavily in numerous other programs to help educate our children, including communities and schools, 
middle school renaissance, and many more. And it's important to understand this context when considering the, considering the budget request that the public schools have made this year. An all funds review will show that RPS is asking for an estimated total increase of $60 million from the city. In FY16, we're proposing to assist them in meeting roughly $47 million of this request. Because I share a commitment to academic improvement, I am proposing to authorize a special one-time bridge funding of $10 million from our reserve to jumpstart this public school's efforts toward improving achievement. We will earmark these reserves in a special school's acceleration fund to be distributed incrementally based upon mutually agreed upon performance measures and measurable progress in reducing the 9,300 empty seats we have in our public school system. That number is surely surprising to most Richmonders. And I want to applaud Chairman Don Coleman for having the courage to raise this problem that Richmond has ignored for far too long. In a city with 21,000 students, we have 9,300 empty seats. For every two children, there's another empty seat. This drives up the per pupil cost and forces Richmond to spend too much on buildings and not enough on students. I want to spend money on children, not on empty seats. That's why I'm proposing an evidence-based, accountability-driven approach in partnership with the schools based on the goals and their efforts to improve academic achievement. In short, we want to put this money in an escrow account. It will be uh, set aside and made available to the schools once the school board, the city council, and I all agree on a clear plan for reducing the 9,300 empty seats in our schools. And I want everyone to understand this is neither a best practice nor a preferred budgeting approach. It's generally not physically prudent to take money out of reserves to pay for operating costs. But because our academic needs are real, I'm proposing that this one-time exception provided that all of us make the decision together. Now, let's be honest. I'm sure some will say, with all of this investment, it's still not enough. And I'm sure some will say, we can only do the job if you give us the entire $30 million and give it to us every year. Others will ask, why can't you find money for the schools when you can find money for a brewery? Well, let's talk about that. You can build things by borrowing money and paying it over time, but it's a bad idea to pay your day-to-day -day bills with borrowed money. If you put your electric bill on your credit card, for example, you're not actually paying it off. You're simply putting it off. Eventually, the credit card bill comes due, and you have to pay it. It's just harder to get it paid. So we can look at this proposal in many, many ways. But two ways to generate $30 million in operating money every year in Richmond would require us to raise taxes by 15 cents. That would, take, that would make Richmond the highest tax rate in Central Virginia and send it through the roof. Not only would it hurt us, but it would cripple us. It would cause people to move away from Richmond, and it would reduce the amount of money that we have for schools. Another way to generate $30 million is to cut the budget. But a modest trim will not get you $30 million. To get $30 million, we would have to eliminate all of the police and fire raises we're proposing, all of the body cameras, and all of the things that I have mentioned previously in this message. And we would still be $20 million short. Now, these are not serious options. It's clear that the only way for us to climb out of this situation is to grow our economy and to generate more money so that schools and all of the departments of the city will be able to participate. And that's why I've made economic and community development a cornerstone of my administration. And we're working hard to attract new businesses like Stone and to retain current employers like Martin Agency. Across the city, we're transforming neighborhoods and putting actionable plans in place to create jobs. For FY16, we're proposing $2.5 million as a part of our efforts to transform public housing. Funds will be used to partner with the private sector to redevelop severely distressed public housing complexes, including Wickham, Mosby, Creighton, and Fairfield. Thanks to our partnership with Governor Terry McAuliffe and Senator Mark Warner and Tim Kaine, 
Richmond last fall secured a federal grant to move toward bus rapid transit along Broad Street. This year, we are proposing a local match of 3.8 million in FY16 and 17, which will finally advance this important mobility project. Along the East Riverfront, capital funds of 2.9 million over five years will help transform the community by advancing the Intermediate Terminal Riverfront Access Project. We're proposing to fund Route 5 relocation with $300,000 in 16 and 2 million in 17. We're proposing 7.1 million over five years for transportation improvements along the East Riverfront. All of these projects have been in the pipeline for many years and they're consistent with our Riverfront Master Plan. They're now moving forward thanks in large part to the $74 million Stone Brewery Company project. And in FY 2018, we're recommending an $8 million loan to the Economic Development Authority for the development of Stone Brewing Phase II Bistro. Rental payments paid by Stone Brewing will cover the debt and support expenses. Across the city, we're proposing $2.7 million over five years to renovate neighborhood parks as well as 990 uh, for upgrade of the Kanawha Plaza Park downtown. Residents have continually expressed concern about the condition of our roadways, and that's why we're proposing $4.5 million for road paving projects in 16, and an additional $4 million is anticipated in state revenue sharing funds for a total of $8.5 million, over $9 million in capital funds as recommended over the next five years. To upgrade sidewalks, we're proposing $850,000 in capital funds in 16, and we anticipate an additional 850 in state revenue and sharing funds for a total of $1.7 million, approximately 2.3 million in city capital funds as recommended over five years. Many of the city's buildings are well over 30 years old and will require funds for basic upkeep. That's why we're proposing a million dollars in capital funding for major building renovations in 16 and 4.8 million over five years to provide structural and system replacements and improvements in more than 100 city-owned buildings. In the same way, we have aging utility infrastructure. It requires expensive continual maintenance to maintain regulatory compliance. For this reason, this budget proposes a 6% increase in the water utility and a 4% increase for wastewater and gas while keeping stormwater utility rates level. This means that the average monthly residential bill for customers and gas and water and wastewater services will see a monthly increase of $5.95. It's important to remember that two years ago, City Council approved a new rate structure known as the conservation rate. It provides a substantially lower base service charge and it looks at usage. Residents who use lower amounts of water have seen market in decreases in their water and wastewater bills. Those who moderate amounts of water saw relatively flat water and wastewater changes. Finally, let me turn to our city's workforce. This budget includes a 2% salary increase for all general fund employees. Sworn positions and constitutional officers will receive separate raises in 16. The estimated cost of the increase is $2.1 million. In addition, this will be the third year in a row that the city will absorb all health care premium increases on behalf of employees. This reflects a 6.8% uh, rate increase or $1.1 million increase over 15. Employees can see their costs remain steady by completing their health assessments and medical follow-ups. As elected officials, we need to acknowledge that it's not easy to work in the public sector, and these are important ways for us to say thank you to all of those who work for us every day. And so in conclusion, I want us all to remember that we have much to be proud of as Richmonders and as a part of this workforce, as a part of this government, our city is alive, our city is growing, our city is resurgent. It's an exciting and vibrant place to live and it's attracting people from all over the world. And that's the spirit in which I propose this budget. It's a plan to balance our priorities. 
It's a plan to propel our hometown forward. And it's a plan to maintain our strong physical health. We're turning around our finances. We're aiming toward AAA bond rating. But to get there, we're going to need a strong public school system. We're going to need thriving neighborhoods. We're going to have to reduce poverty. And we're going to have to reward our employees for the contrib contributions that they make to running this organization. And so finally, together with all of you on city council, the school board, and all of those who work together to make this the great city that it is, I look forward to keeping Richmond a great place to live, work, play, and do business. Thank you so much for allowing me to present my budget. Thank you so much, Mayor Jones. Madam uh, President. Mr. Trammell. Mr. Mayor, I just want to say thank you for this presentation on the budget and what you said about police and fire, our city employees, and also the schools. They matter to you. And from the bottom of my heart, I think you spoke, you know, from your heart with what you just said today. And I know that you've made a lot of city employees happy. And I know that um, I think it was in Sunday's paper they were talking about, um, I guess, the people that are struggling the most, and it's on Southside. And I know that you will probably look into some of the things that you can do, like with the Hillside Court, and then other neighborhoods in our in our area across the river. Well, thank but you I very much. To say thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. I believe there is a motion. Yes, Madam. Madam President. I move to suspend Rule 6 of the Council's Rules of Procedure for all budget-related ordinances introduced today so that those ordinances are not referred to or reviewed by the Standing Committee but are instead reviewed during a budget review process developed by the Council and the Council Chief of Staff and heard during the budget public hearing scheduled for Monday, April 13, 2015 at 6 p.m. Councilwoman Robertson, will you second that motion? Yes, ma'am. Second, Madam Clerk. Council is voting on the motion by Councilwoman Graziano to suspend Rule 6 of Council's Rules of Procedure for all budget-related ordinances introduced today. Mr. Balaus? Aye. Ms. Graziano? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Agilesto? Aye. Ms. Robertson? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Vice President Hilbert? Aye. President Mosby. Aye. That motion has passed. Those papers will be before you on Monday, April the 13th at the 6 p.m. formal council meeting. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, there being no further business before the council, I believe that this meeting is adjourned.